incredible night. The dude got an early spot in the weatherman. Says nature seems to know better than the weatherman does. That's right. You can't imagine. Look at the drama from the front seat. Yeah. You, I said, you have no open ground around this car. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank goodness. Well, see, I don't think we had, there wasn't much moss in the ground early on. Then we got snow on top of that. Then we had the cold. So I'm guessing there's not a lot of frost in the ground. Oh, yeah. All day. The last two days walking, all the road beds are just mush. So the water's just draining right in. Yeah. And it was dry going in. Yeah, I was just right. I was just waiting for all that water to run down my foundation. <laughs> well, my watch says it's seven thirty in the morning, so we'll get this going to order, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At 7.30 uh, in the morning, let's uh, call a meeting to order, please. Uh, the agenda, of the this is the meeting of the Land and Land Use and Planning Committee. The agenda was posted in the office of the county clerk on the 16th day of February 2021. Notice was sent to the West Bend Daily News, Express News, WIBD, WMBZ Radio, WTKM Radio, My Community Now, Hartford Times Press, Kewaskam Statesman, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Uh, and those of you who are joining us uh, remotely, um, we welcome you this morning. We'll stand with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let me back up for just a moment with the roll call. Supervisor Schulteis is excused this morning. I've not heard from Supervisor Boltman. Have you heard anything from him? All right, so uh, just as a, a side comment on protocols, uh, one of the other supervisors suggested to me last night when we start these meetings to let people know, uh, particularly anybody who's viewing in from the outside, uh, we are practicing COVID protocols. We're spaced out here in the meeting room. Uh, if you feel comfortable wearing masks, please do so. But we do suggest, please, if you make a presentation, uh, please remove the masks. We have found that with the microphone systems here, if you're wearing a mask, we have a lot of garbled discussion and it's very difficult to understand. So um, please follow that. Uh, please follow that rule this morning. Uh, first item on the business, the, um, the agenda is the consent agenda. And before we get into that, I'd like to make a couple comments, please. Um, and I have wrote this down because otherwise I'm going to rem not for remember all my thoughts. Uh, too often, governmental bodies are tagged as being inefficient and wasteful and a great place to get a job because you can go to work, do nothing, and retire 30 years later. Now, after serving for three years as an elected supervisor and having worked with a lot of folks, particularly with those involved with the university extension and with this committee, I can't begin to say the right words to convey the thought that you are all tremendous professionals. I have a soft spot for anything that has to do with extension and particularly 4-H and youth development. And I've worked with Amy and Steph and Paul and Cindy and the others on the teams. I've always been impressed with how much they want to reach out and serve, whether it's 4-H or farmers wanting to learn to be better businessmen. Then there is Sharon Martin and her team, team at the registrar's office. And I read through the report she and Lisa put together and we have all have to be impressed. Despite COVID and all the gyrations the team there had to go through, they never broke stride in serving the citizens of Washington County. Look at the report on how the demands of their office over the past year were up dramatically with, by multiples of double digit increases and how they successfully managed to work remotely or in the office or on a rotation basis, and there was always someone there. Overall revenues for services were up, but yet they kept a cap on expenses. Then there are the programs run through the Land Resource Division. And here again, we see growth in activities during 2020. And Lord knows what we've done with the parks this last year. 
As it says in one part of the presentations, during this time, responding to customers' needs, needs, customers needs stays a top priority. Examples of this professionalism, professionalism and leadership just go on and on in these reports. And I really do hope all of you on this committee have gone through the reports. There are many, many pages there, but there's a tremendous amount of data there. I won't even begin to try to mention everyone involved because for sure someone will be missed. But on behalf of the entire Board of Supervisors, and I'm sure all the members of this committee here today, I say thank you for your commitment to your jobs, for making sure our public, the citizens of Washington County, is served at the highest possible levels of service, and for your total professionals. We're all very, very proud of you and the work you do. Thank you. Now, with that, we'll get into the consent agenda. There are four items there. I'd like to entertain a motion, please, to accept the agenda as presented. Brian, put your microphone down. Um, the question was regarding the uh, February 25th um, Park and Planning Department report, specifically under the land permitting services, um, the sanitary permits up. Um, you know, when we look at potential uh, levy increase, um, are we anticipating uh, even greater pouts and presumably more houses going on the market? <laughs> That's a really good question. I think when we go into the budget process we're related to that revenue, um, we will likely, we'll take a look at the five-year average, we'll take a look at what happened in 2020, um, and we, we typically do, um, or we have in the past uh, projected slight increases to that. Um, so we will probably continue down that trajectory without being too, too aggressive on the fee revenue. Okay. Thank you. Motion and second, then we can have more complete discussion. Mr. Krebs, thank you, Supervisor Krebs. Motion. Is there a second? Supervisor Boltman seconds. Now, any further discussion on the four items here? The minutes of the meeting, the 2020 Register of Deeds annual report, the land use is, uh, division update and the parks and plannings department monthly update any discussion hearing then i'll entertain a vote to accept the consent agenda as uh, uh, as presented all in favor say aye aye thank you opposed moving on to the discussion items jamie you want to lead that discussion for the group introduce people I think Paul Robach is on Zoom, correct? And so I think he's the first thing, and I think he's going to provide just a brief kind of update on what he's up to. Right, Paul? Correct. Can you hear me good? Yes. I'll take that as a yes. Loudly. What was that? Speak loudly. Well, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me better? Yes. Great. Uh, so as Jamie introduced me, my name is Paul Roback. I'm the community development educator at UW Extension. And I provided a one page summary of kind of my programmatic activity over the past year. I thought it'd be just a, a nice opportunity to provide an update on kind of who and what I am and what I've done over the last year. So in my role in the county, I primarily work with local governments and nonprofits. Uh, doing research, strategic planning, uh, meeting facilitation. Um, last year, I had the opportunity to start the year working with the several nonprofits. And then, of course, COVID hit and some things changed a little bit. Some organizations decided not to move forward and postpone the processes, which allowed me the opportunity then to um, do two things. One is I was able to develop uh, a new curriculum on board development. Uh, kind of helping nonprofit organizations understand their roles and responsibilities of serving on boards. And two, it allowed me to um, communicate by email 
uh, kind of current status uh, information uh, that nonprofits as well as the Chambers of Commerce uh, used uh, in the early COVID-19 days, information was kind of spotty and it wasn't coming out very quickly or effectively. Uh, so fortunately, um, I was able to share information quickly with nonprofits. And then that information was also shared uh, through the Chamber of Commerce electronic newsletter. So went out to over 800 uh, members. Uh, a couple other organizations did decide to continue uh, with strategic planning activities during COVID. So we pivoted to a uh, virtual environment. Uh, so everyone became more familiar using Zoom as well as uh, doing more programming and surveying uh, of information in a virtual format. On the local government side of things, I um, do projects for the county board, uh, the county executive, county departments on demand, uh, as well as local municipalities. So uh, last year I had opportunity to work with uh, Village of Germantown, uh, Village of Newburgh, uh, the city of West Bend, and then of course, working with the county board on uh, discussing and coming up with a game plan on uh, county board size and structure. Uh, what's interesting uh, is that that topic uh, became real popular in the state of Wisconsin for a short while there. And so I was receiving requests from other counties for uh, the information on the work that we did here in Washington County. So I had the opportunity to present to uh, the two counties with the largest county boards, uh, that being Marathon and Dane counties. And uh, one, I guess, benefit of, of the virtual environment is that I could present uh, to their meetings without having to leave um, the confines of my home office. So uh, just as a side note, Marathon County has the largest board in the state, I think the largest board in the country, and they decided not to reduce at all. So um, uh, I, I, they decided not to follow your lead in, in uh, reducing county board structure. Um, and then most recently, a couple of the recent projects uh, working on the Samaritan Task Force. I've been um, helping facilitate that process. Um, it's a group of seven citizens uh, that were appointed by the county executive to answer the question of whether or not the county should still be in the providing the long-term care services. They've had two meetings, they have another meeting coming up. Those meetings are public and they're being live streamed. Um, and so their recommendation is anticipated to go to the um, Human Service Board coming up at their March meeting. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to mention um, with the local government programs that I've been um, helping Jamie out with um, a project for the County Executive well, um, getting uh, input from the agricultural community. What are some of the challenges that they're facing and how can the county assist them? Uh, one program this year that changed quite a bit for me was our staff development program uh, known as Real Colors. Uh, that is a workshop format where it's in person and you have like 40, 50 people in a room. Um, obviously with COVID restrictions, we weren't able to do that um, in person. Uh, we did provide it virtually for a couple organizations. Uh, so uh, I was surprised that it worked well and that people, the participants still enjoyed the program even in a virtual environment. Um, we're hoping uh, that with uh, vaccine rollouts that we'll be able to start offering that again in person uh, with county employees and others and that we'll be able to build that program back up again and get it out into the community. Um, it's a popular program. Um, and we look forward to being able to provide that again. So that's just a kind of a brief overview of some of the programs that I've been working on. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Well, I couldn't hear you. I ask, are there any questions for you? Apparently we have nothing from here this morning. <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Yes, sir. Is Mr. Bliss with us this morning and going to make an introduction? Yes, thank you. Um, so I would just very briefly, I'm gonna let Logan introduce himself, but Logan Bliss, um, 
he joined us on Monday. He's the county's new parks and trails manager. Um, we are, I don't think anyone is happier to have him on board than me. Um, and I said yesterday that I've been trying really hard. Um, I'd like to say I'm trying hard not to overwhelm him, but I'm pretty sure that we're accomplishing uh, overwhelming him. Um, so uh, I'll let him introduce himself, but we just wanted to bring him here today so you could put a name with a face. Um, and if you, um, he's still kind of getting his feet under him. So um, Brian, go easy on the long-term business planning questions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and project manager for the company, uh, primarily worked on uh, environmental uh, restoration work on like how long corridors and stuff like that for large energy companies. Uh, graduated in 2010 from University of Wisconsin City Point, uh, my degrees are in biology with minor in natural resources. And I'm just really excited about this opportunity to take on this role for the county and uh, just very grateful. I mean, feel free. Welcome, and, and yes, you know, we're, we're glad to have you. Mind mind. I'll reserve a couple of questions. So she's referring to the sustainability model for our uh, Glacier Hills and some of the, uh, the other developers there. And I think we all uh, want it to be successful, but so that, that's what she was pointing to. So I'm sure we'll chat in the future. <laughs> Welcome, Logan. Thank you very much. At this point in time, uh, Jamie, we're going to come to you regarding the, your presentation regarding the sale of the portion of Family Park. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, so just to recap and to refresh my memory, how many of you were on the county board when 2019 Resolution 55 to annex to the city of Hartford and sell a portion of Family Park was passed? Todd, were you, you were not, and I don't believe Jody was. Okay. Um, so what I wanted to do is I, very quickly, and I, I put it in the report, so hopefully the two of you had the chance to read that. Um, but that was, that was sort of history. Um, and with that decision of the county board kind of came a subsequent amount of, you know, okay, now we need to do this. Now we need to do this. Now we need to do this to execute the will of what that resolution read. So on page two, I had kind of tried to walk through a timeline of what had happened um, since that resolution passed. Kind of, it took a long time for a variety of reasons. COVID didn't help. We also had just a, we just didn't move on it as well at the staff level. Um, so it, it was slow to move, um, but it did get restarted. Um, and, and recently, the city of Hartford annexed the Washington County Golf Course to the city of Hartford. Um, so the county golf course is now, now resides in the city. Um, and they also approved a land use amendment, which is their smart growth plan. So it's, it's a plan. It doesn't, you know, it really is just a plan that shows the portion of Family Park we're going to talk about today as something other than a park or at, with potential. Um, and their board talked a lot about how they wanted to express the opportunity for something else and that they were willing to entertain that discussion. Um, they also talked about um, how with 283 acres, um, they were bringing in 280 that they, had, they fully intended to remain in sort of that recreational park realm. And so they were willing to consider another use for this three to four acre uh, desire of the county at the time. Um, so what has happened since then is, so that that was great, that passed. Um, I think it was pretty, this, the city of Hartford, uh, I think pretty overwhelmingly supported it. Um, there was there there was quite a bit of politics involved between the town of Hartford and the city of Hartford during this project. Um, and now we're in the position to sell Family Park. And so 
I, I do, I am going to, I am talking in open session because there's a, there's been a lot of residents around the golf course and around this parcel following this. Um, and so I want to just make sure I'm expressing to them what our intent is, um, which is that we are now looking at how we're going to sell this three to four acres. Um, so one of the recent discussions that we had internally um, in our corp council, Brad is not here today, um, but we talked at length about um, this is again, somewhat unique of a process and uh, what is the role, you know, what are the roles? So we believe, and we're taking, you know, we're, we're taking the position, but I want to express it. So it's transparent that, that, that authorizing resolution 2019 resolution 55 held the intent to sell this three to four acres and execute any documents necessary to do so. Um, so thereby not requiring county board approval to do, to basically enact that transaction. Here's the caveat, the land use and planning committee under our ordinances holds what we believe to be certain authority over land transactions um, and certain details of those transactions, um, which, which we believe then makes this committee um, sort of the approving authority on some of these. Um, and so when I say that, we're going to go into closed session and talk about price, um, but it also could be any other complications or things that surface around this property that are more, slightly more technical in nature or just something that maybe we aren't expecting to happen um, that then is outside of what we believe that intent of that resolution was. So depending on what happens with this, we could talk about this today. We could talk about this again in six months. We could, we could come back and talk about um, sort of what happens with that. Um, so I'm gonna stop right there. Does anyone have any questions or comments or concerns about the inter that interpretation of uh, how we're gonna handle this transaction at the staff level? Okay. Okay, so if if that becomes an issue, you know, please let me know. But that's that's sort of what what our intent is, and um, you know, certainly feel free to talk to Don or or others if for some reason something surfaces that or Josh, the county executive, if if we have any concerns about that. Um, okay, so I wanted to walk through that. Um, so we're in a position to be talking about the sale of Family Park, but I just want to clarify a couple things for the record. The name of the golf course is the Washington County Family Park. So sometimes that gets confusing um, because then next to it, sort of the, the, and Deb was here during this time, sort of the leftover creation was also called Family Park, which is the, the smaller piece. So that can be a little confusing sometimes because if you go back in time and in history, a lot of times they're referencing family park and they really mean the golf course or we're really talking about the golf course. Um, and then when the golf course was actually planned and designed, the pond is the irrigation pond and then the pump house. And then there was essentially about three to four acres that we're going to talk about that was kind of left where they constructed a parking lot and uh, provided access to that pond. I point that out only because that comes up sometimes with, well, uh, the donation piece or, you know, we're talking about family park. We are not talking about the golf course um, as it relates to what we are looking to do. Um, I did provide in the packet some aerial photos. Um, one point I want to make on page one is that is the blue outline of the parcel that is the Washington County Family Park Golf Course. It is all one parcel right now. So we do not have a parcel of land created to sell. Um, so that's, we're going to talk a little bit further about that. But so we are not selling the whole golf course. However, there is not currently a parcel created, there is no land division. The land division, as well as the zoning, still has to be approved by the city of Hartford. So whatever happens here, um, and we're gonna talk about the reasons why we're actually looking to market this property before the land division is created. Um, and that, that will be the strategy we talk about in closed session, 
but that makes this a little bit more of a dynamic process um, because you're, we will be selling kind of a concept, which is shown on page two. Um, and you can see that that little sort of three in three, I say three to four acres because the lines are not currently drawn. Um, we did etch up back in 2019, a kind of sketch of what a potential uh, full subdivision CSM could look like here. Um, but we're gonna talk about why we believe it's in the best interest not to, not to do that before and to sort of <laughs> wait for uh, what would be the buyer in this case of this parcel. Um, so you can kind of see the outline of the property generally of what we would be looking at. Right next to the red line, um, next to the pond, you can kind of see the shadow of a very small hut-like structure. That is our pump house, of which has to be accessed by heavy equipment um, several times a year. So right now that access point and that the road goes through the land we're talking about, and then it comes off a of clover road. So there is a good, there is, it is likely that the county will be using some of the proceeds or if this happens to look at constructing a road off of the access to access that pump house. Um, and, or we're gonna, this committee, and we're gonna talk about some things like parking because depending on the outcome of maintaining the currently, um, I think it's fair to say the heaviest use of this area is walking around this pond, which can also be accessed on the other side by the neighbors and fishing the pond. And so that piece of it, and you can kind of see that trail starting around that pond um, is still as of right now, um, you know, the thought is we would look at how we're going to maintain that public access to that area. And, you know, parking becomes kind of an issue. So <clears throat> that was really kind of what I had planned for open session. Does anybody have any questions about process or uh, the sale in general? And then what I'll be asking for is a motion to go into closed session. Um, and we're gonna just talk a little bit about a couple, some of the challenges on the property and then specifically um, what we'd be looking at potentially starting with for purchase price. Um, in discussion with our realtors. I believe Supervisor Gallant has questions. Uh, thank you, Chair. Do you address the, the one that he had is that it hasn't been divided yet, no CSM, so there's no legal separate entity at this point. Um, and those are some of the details we're gonna talk about, including the uh, access to the pump house. I mean, with all, just in general, would those be tied to the deed of the property? So, so that's, that's where um, there could, it's very difficult without knowing the future use of the process to, to design that solution. Um, because there could be scenarios where it's done as an easement, where it's done as joint access, um, where we just create our own access, create the road to the pump house. Um, and so I, I could probably answer that question specifically if, if we knew we have a residential buyer who's gonna build one house right here, or we have um, a, a buyer who's interested in just holding on to the property. We have a buyer who's interested and, and without getting too much into this, I think I can say, or I have said in the past, you know, the county, we may entertain, you know, what about access to the pond for whoever lives there? Now that pond is ours, um, what about access to that pond or access to more shared space if required under uh, City of Hartford rules and regulations for planned use developments? Um, so some of those questions we don't we don't have answers to. We're just aware of sort of this bulleted list of we have to deal with the access. We have irrigation piping that runs um, through corners or certain segments of the property. So whether that's an easement or how that gets addressed. Um, we have the public use next door um, and what happens to that and how that ends up playing out. Um, and then really those are kind of the big, bigger three that we have on our radar to say, 
you know, we have to make sure that those become addressed with the land division. Thank you. Uh, Jamie, you, you said that the pond is ours as far as the counties. Do, do you know that? Because in the state of Wisconsin, all waterways are under the ownership of the state. And so I'm wondering if there's any riparian rights that are associated with the lands around this pond mm -hmm. or what public access that we're required to, to keep under state statues. No, this one's, uh, I mean, there's, there's wells in, I mean, this is an irrigation Spring, pond. Springs or wells? Wells. Deb, do you know that? I believe it's wells. It's wells. Yeah. So is this man created? Yeah. Uh, yes. It's wet there, so it was, but yes. Deb, if you want to wait. So Deb was here when this was built, right, Deb? I was, yeah, I was here right after it was built. Yep. Do you have anything else to add on that comment? Yeah, we own all the land around it right now. Currently, but we're talking about selling three acres, and it's a matter of if the land goes up to the water's edge of this pond or not. If it does, so you can see where our pump house is right there. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's sort of that give and take conversation. And I, I would I would suggest if we're going to talk about this, that potentially we may be convened into closed session um, related to specifics because we it might actually impact what you're going to say about value so understood is this a good time then to go to that closed session section mm -hmm. sure all right then i would entertain a 